Hey, what's up guys? It's Joe from GadgetryTech.com and today is review part two of the MSI B250M Mortar Micro ATX motherboard. Now for those who are technically astute, you will notice at the top I have a very basic uh, hardware configuration on this. It's the least expensive Intel KB Lake processor because I wanted a 7th gen processor with 4 gigs of DDR4 memory. Now the DDR4 I have uh, supports 3000 megahertz. However, this is not an overclocking board. So it's running at the memory controller supported 2133 megahertz that you see here at the top. Um, I got this particular Celeron because the integrated GPU is the first one from Intel that supports 40K at 60 frames per second, sorry, 4K at 60 frames per second using an HDMI 2.0 port or DisplayPort 1.2 to HDMI 2.0 adapter. I didn't want to buy a graphics card for this because it's just a home theater PC with Xbox streaming, so I need no other no other graphical horsepower on top of that. Uh, moving on, so this is basic mode. You can see on the left hand side it says easy mode. I have CPU information, RAM information, and I want to point out if you notice, uh, DIM A1 is not being utilized. The motherboard manual actually says if you're only putting one stick in that you start with A2. If you're doing two sticks, then you do A2 and B2. That's your primary controller uh, slot right there. Then if you're going with four sticks, you can use uh, A1 and B1. So um, that's something important to note. RAM timing, as you can see, it supports DDR4-3000 uh, if you use the XMP profile, but because it's a B250 chipset, I can't utilize the highest possible speeds. Storage, um, just a couple Western Digital Enterprise drives with a solid state drive. I just have extra drives, so I'm uh, loading them up for offline storage. Fan profiles. I mentioned this before. This is actually really cool. So I can set system fans um, speed if they're connected, uh, smart fan mode, and then there's the whole DC versus PWM. If I do DC, then any three pin fan will allow me to, um, it'll still allow me to spin it up and, and lower the speeds automatically. I don't have to buy a memory or a, a fan controller. Now I do have a fan controller on this particular case. I'm actually using the Rosewell Colonon case, which supports up to six fans. So I'm using that just because it's a really quick hit and I like to put it in silent mode when I'm watching movies, which kills all fans but the CPU. So here's a quick idea of how it adjusts. You can see the CPU temperature, system temperature, because there are different probes on the board and I can set the fan profile accordingly. I've never had the fan spin up because this processor runs so cold that I've never had it go above 32 or 33C. Uh, help, which I've never actually clicked on. I guess it just tells you how to use the interface. M flash, if you want to flash your motherboard and change the BIOS, you can do that without having to load uh, the operating system. Hardware monitor is basically what we looked at already. So one thing that's kind of cool, if I go into advanced mode, this is where you can actually change a lot more stuff. Now, system status, let's just start using the, um, the arrow keys. DMI information, let's see if I can expand that. This is about the board. Let's go back here. I'm just gonna hit the escape key. So advanced, PCI sub settings, um, if I go yeah, blinking the power light, integrated peripherals, I can enable SATA, disable SATA, the LAN, audio controller, which is the headphone jacks, if you will. Um, I'm spending very little time on these because I want to focus on a couple items to keep the video reasonably short. Uh, however, you can always pause it if you want to see all the breakdown. Intel Thunderbolt, fully disabled because I don't have it. Um, USB controller. Now, XHCI handoff, um, it says it supports for operating systems without the XCHI handoff feature. For those of you looking to experiment with a Hackintosh, this motherboard will support it. You do want to enable that, I believe, um, but use the you know Tony Mac x86 website for a guide. But this does support legacy USB. It does support XHCI handoff, and you can enable uh, legacy ROMs um, for boot instead of just UEFI. Super I/O is a serial power management. Um, if you lose power, do you want it to turn on? This is the big one. Now, I just disable Windows 7 installation support because I want the least amount of features turned on that I need to run Windows 10. However, if I enable this, 
and I go to the boot options afterwards, and once I hit apply, it's gonna drastically change because instead of just all these U's for UEFI, you're gonna see this standard, um, watch this, look at the top here. Now I have a lot of legacy support. Um, so if you're putting Linux on this machine, you can still run Windows 10 with the Windows 7 installation enabled, um, but this will these extra options will let you run other operating systems as well. Now there is a feature that MSI offers. There's a program you can download, and you can download this to another computer. Um, basically, it allows you to create Windows 7 driver tools to install Windows 7 on a KB Lake CPU, which, as many of you know, KB Lake was designed for Windows 10 and up only. So MSI does give you features to install any operating system you want. I started doing it, but I knew I was going to run 10 anyway. It does let me boot to the Windows 7 installation, and then it prompts for the driver disk. If I ran that MSI software, I could have then plugged it into a USB drive, so you will need a couple USB sticks to do this, um, and then I could run Windows 10, or Windows 7. So I'm going to disable Windows 7 for now, just to keep everything working. Fast boot, um, it won't detect other ports when booting, it'll just kind of load straight into uh, the operating system, um, the Microsoft Fastboot, um, or the standard Fastboot, um, is it your default that you get with all motherboards. It's just like what Windows 8 is always used. Graphics configuration, secure boot if you want it disabled or not. Uh, I don't like everything turned off because um, I like to still control it. If I need to escape during the boot process to make some changes, I, I want to be able to do that easily. Wake up events. Now, secure erase, this is kind of cool. Um, if you have an SSD and you need to uh, clean it, if you will, um, the secure erase feature will take care of that um, through the hardware as opposed to doing like a disk defrag, which is something you can't do with an SSD. So that feature is baked into the motherboard, which is really nice. So again, this is the big one I wanted to show is that it does support Windows 7, Linux, and Hackintosh. So this board does do everything. And for 90 bucks, as you saw in the prior video, um, this is a great, great motherboard. Now, boot, full screen logo. I'm looking for one key or one setting. Let's see if I can find it real quick. If not, I think I have to do it on the um, software on the desktop and I can show you that too. But basically, there is an option to, yeah, here we go, go to BIOS. So, go to BIOS, if you read that on the right hand side, is one of my favorite features. For everyone who's used Windows 8 and Windows 10, when you hold push the power button down, it boots up very quickly, especially if you have SSD. So you can't really ever get into the BIOS until you restart, hold down the shift key, and then load the UEFI BIOS configuration. With go to BIOS, when you hold, turn on your computer, just hold the power button down for four seconds. I've done four to seven seconds, and it still works. Let go, and it actually boots straight into BIOS. I don't have to do any of that restart junk. So instead of button mashing the keyboard for you know F12 for boot or F2 or delete, you just hold down the button and you get there every time, which your keyboard will thank you for. Boot up on NumLock, auto clear CMOS, so if your computer has been overclocked or you have any kind of odd hardware configuration that's breaking it, um, a couple reboots uh, after failed starts will automatically reset the motherboard. And here is the advanced menus version of changing your boot order. Just hit enter and you can change it. Um, UEFI hard drive, uh, so if you have multiple UEFI operating systems or drives and you want to change that boot order, you can. Same with the USB key. Security, we covered that. Save and exit. So this is kind of odd. If I go to overclock, expert, there's some stuff you can change, right? It shows CPU ratio, auto, but it's grayed out. So let's... It doesn't technically support overclocking, so even though it's here, if I type 30 or 39, see it, it immediately switches back. Let's try 20 and then 2000, so let's try 31. It doesn't. So I can underclock, which is cool if you're trying to save power, but I'm going to type auto again. There we go. So you can detune your processor if you want to save power, but you can't increase the speed. That is locked to only the Z270M version, not the B250. I believe, yeah, I did enable my um, XMP profile, and as you can see, I do have 3000 megahertz DDR4 RAM. This is the ballistics. 
um, and there are manual features. Now you're going to notice another thing, I can't select anything higher than what the memory controller supports, the 2133. So even though it knows it's there and the RAM is capable, it's not going to let me do it. Um, and that's a limitation of the B250M. I didn't need to buy 3000 megahertz RAM, I just did it because I wanted the, the best price and it was on a really good sale. Uh, latency, you can, again, it's not, you can detune, but you can't increase performance, if that makes sense. So I think that covers the overclock. It, there's really nothing to it. When you have the Z270, all of this stuff will start giving you more options to play with, um, and you can actually increase the speed beyond the factory rated numbers. OC profiles, again, fairly pointless. They should call it underclocking profiles on this. Hardware monitor, again. Board Explorer is kind of cool. If you have hardware connected to it, it's going to tell you on the bottom what it is. Um, USB, so these are the SATA ports I'm using. Uh, let's see, power connector, great. Celeron, so pretty basic stuff. If you have these populated, it just gives you kind of a virtual breakdown of what's connected and what isn't. Uh, and that's cool, it actually shows you what USB ports you're using and which ones you're not. Um, I am using a gigabit ethernet. So that covers the BIOS. We're going to reboot real quick. Uh, again, this is a very cheap SSD. It's about four years old. I did this on a, a budget, but even so, it will boot up very quickly. I'm going to hit no. Uh, oh, cool. It tells you you haven't because I reverted back successfully. So from there and show you some features that MSI gives you. There's the All right, KB Lake processor is alive. And I switched networks, so I'll just say yes. Okay, so MSI Command Center, Latency Tuner, which is kind of funny because of, um, I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment, what that does. So let's just start at the top. MSI Commander is some basic tools that we kind of covered in the BIOS. It just kind of pulls some things together on the operating system side. And again, I can detune, but I can't increase the performance. So the same limitations I have in the BIOS is here as well. You can overvolt if for any reason you want to, uh, even though there's no performance gain there. Let's close this. Um, and that's about it. So on the Z, again, on the B250, this is pretty pointless uh, software. I wouldn't bother uh, using it because you can't do much with it. Um, if you just want to monitor temperatures, there's much lighter programs that you can use instead. So let's go to here. DPC Latency Tuner is essentially a more advanced overclocking um, program, and you can enable and disable features. Now, this processor doesn't have Turbo Boost, so this isn't smart enough to know what you have, but it does come with uh, the ability to enable and disable certain things. There's the frequency. This will probably let me click a higher speed. I doubt I'll ever get it because the motherboard doesn't support it. I'm not going to restart because it'll just revert back anyway. So let's close out of here. There's your integrated graphics if you need to overclock your Intel graphics card. Again, no point in doing that with the B250. The gaming app, um, I was hoping for more. It doesn't do a lot. Um, basically, this is kind of more like a hardware monitor that looks cool if you like the way that looks. The, the VR ready mode will disable as many background services as it can to give you the best possible performance. So if you have a graphics card and you're doing gaming, you can do that. Mouse Master Gaming Hotkey to set your shortcuts um, for either different software on MSI. There you go, overclock mode. Login keys, loading apps, you can set hotkeys for that, and then macros. So, you know, cool stuff. Uh, LEDs, if you have and the RGB LEDs connected to it, you can actually tell it what to do. Now this motherboard comes with LEDs on it, but they only light up in red. So whether I flash them on and off is fine, but I can't change the color. This is only useful if you have an RGB strip hooked up to it. So let's get out of here. MSI Gaming LAN Manager. Now this is that whole quality of service thing I was talking about. Um, it is very basic. Um, you can basically add Look at that, and it froze. This software I noticed uh, when you install the Intel drivers um, doesn't support certain features with Intel drivers on the KB Lake with Windows 10. 
So I don't know if there's more support that's going to come out, but when you install the driver, and I may, let's check if I have it still. Um, okay, watch this. So if I go to install the Intel network drivers that MSI gives you, come on. I'll give that a second here. There we go. All right, so if I install the Intel network drivers, it flat out tells me there's a problem with it and that certain features won't be installed. Look at that. So kind of buggy. This is what I've had experience with MSI before and it's not gonna let me do it anyway, so there's no point. I'll load the MSI live update utility and show you what that is. But basically one of the features that this relies on to work doesn't get installed and that's why this kind of breaks. Um, open VPN, I can add programs here. Uh, gaming, if you have different applications on your computer, you can scan them. Customize, if you want to actually add a different profile yourself, you can do it and then set your limits. Um, think of it almost like a quality of service plus firewall if you need to disable services altogether. I'm saving live update for last. The smart tool, this is the one that allows you to put Windows 7 on your computer. Let's load that. Okay. This utility will create an Intel 200 series, that's key there, and AMD 4 compatible Windows 7 installation file. So if you have the new Ryzen CPU, which this motherboard does not support, but the B250 equivalent for M uh, AMD will, um, this will give you the files you need on an 8 gig flash drive. So I'm going to click OK. There's the Win7 Smart Tool, and then you just sel select your um, you know, device that you want to write to. And if you're using NVMe, uh, SSD memory, you can add that to it and it'll actually read your NVMe as well, which is critical for loading an operating system. So this utility is my favorite thing that MSI gives you. There's a couple other companies that do it as well. I believe Asus has it, but this one works perfectly. Supercharger already running, really cool. Uh, that basically just increases your cha charge capability uh, of the USB ports. I'm going to hit scan. I don't like installing drivers I don't need, but this is scanning for any driver that's not MSI provided for components it comes with. I wanted you to see the Intel one. So there's the network driver. That's the one that doesn't work well. Fastboot uh, is, again, another way to optimize the services that load on start. RAM disk, if you have a ton of RAM, you can actually cache your favorite pro, uh, games or applications to RAM after it boots up to make those programs run faster. Xboost, I kind of forgot what that was to be honest. I believe it's a, let's load it real quick here. There you go. It's a storage boost. That's just supposed to increase your USB uh, transfer speeds. They said it, um, they advertise much higher speeds than normal, but you're at the mercy of the write and read capacity of your flash media. Uh, it came with the BIOS already up to date. They haven't, there haven't, hasn't been any uh, BIOS updates since this motherboard shipped. And that's about it. So, again, this is some of the software it comes with. If I go into manual scan and do MSI utilities and optional utilities, then hit scan. Instead of focusing on drivers, these are all the programs you can get in addition to the, all that stuff I just showed you. Uh, Google Toolbar. Again, everything with overclocking, do not bother with the B250M. Um, and that's about it. And so far, like I said, the motherboard's been very stable. My only thing I've ever complained about with MSI is some of the software is kind of buggy and it looks like that trend has continued. Nothing is perfect. Although this is a brand new uh, CPU on a brand new chipset, it will mature over time. So if you're watching this video, um, you know, in summer of 2017 or fall of 2017, it's likely to have improved already. This um, MSI Live update has already updated itself twice since I got this computer a week ago. So MSI is very active with making this compute um, this software improve. So that's a really good sign. I hope that trend continues. This pretty much sums it up. If you guys have any questions, please shoot me comments below. I know this was kind of a ramble, but I wanted you to see the mainly the BIOS features and talk about the software because I wouldn't buy it for all the cool features it advertises. Some of them do not work well at all. Some are buggy and some are excellent. 
I can't state this one enough. The MSI Smart Tool makes your life so easy for installing any operating system you want. So that alone is worth it. And for 90 bucks, I still recommend this board. Live with the, the downs and appreciate what you get that's good. So thanks guys for watching. We will see you next time. Take care.